I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the recap of the April 2021 Chemnitz Dying Long livestream, where we were inspired by this awesome photo NASA released that is a temperature colorized image of Mars and some dunes on Mars, where the cool temperatures are represented by the blue and the warmer temperatures are represented by yellow and orange. Now right here in the pan, I have 200 grams of Wolf and Die For Zebra fingering. This yarn is a really, really fun non superwash bear yarn. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And as you can see, it is two ply, but in some areas the plies are gray or even black. And I thought that this would be a fun way to do a second colorway as part of the stream. But I haven't flipped this yarn yet. Some of these colors were uh, slower to absorb, mainly because, well, it's non superwash. Aha, uh -huh, it looks like those blues have, eh, there might be a little hint. We did add powder on, but basically right now I need to figure out if I need to dye this other side or if this is good. And I'll show a picture of what it looked like right after I applied the dye, and you can see how it softened and spread. But, Oh nice, it did spread to the other side. The colors went through. Um, and so that means that I am gonna go ahead and just wash this off camera. It means I don't need to add more pigment to this other side. Uh, but when I checked during the live stream, the dye powder that I sort of put on in little areas and then tapped in uh, didn't penetrate all the way through. So it just took some time and heat for things to absorb. Anyway, in a moment, I'm gonna take you all to the finished dry yarn, but I did wanna show off the flip here because uh, it was too hot and I didn't wanna do it on stream. Uh, so now let's go look at all the yarn I dyed in my live stream near the end of April. Here is all of the finished dry yarn. For the first colorway, we started with 200 grams of Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And we used 200 grams of Knit Pick's Wool of the Andes, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. We dyed all of this in two steps. First, using the dry powder, we created some tonal yellow at one end and tonal blue at the other. And then I heat set that before we came in and added more honey mustard, fawn, and frozen speckles. We only used those three colors for this project. In the live stream, I mentioned that this isn't the best superwash versus non-superwash kind of comparison. The comparison would be a bit better if I had used Wool of the Andes and Wool of the Andes Superwash, but we do still see how we were able to get much sharper, uh, more saturated, smaller speckles here on the stroll than we did on the Wool of the Andes, where we still have small patches of color from these speckles, but they are more blown out overall. This happens because the colors can strike a lot faster on our stroll than they can on the wool of the Andes. Now, we do still have some sharp speckles in some areas. It can happen, but the character and the feeling, which we especially see down on this blue end, uh, they do feel extremely different. Our fawn was a warm brown color and it absolutely broke and gave us these flicks of red, which aren't in our Mars image, but was still fun and I think works. The biggest thing that I am happy about with this colorway is that we did not create green. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the color green, but with this image, I wanted to play with cool icy blue, warm, orange leaning yellows uh, with some hints of brown and I, you know we were able to achieve that and I am so happy. Next we dyed 200 grams of Wool to Die For's Zebra Fingering Yarn. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and it's non-superwash but I think I mentioned this earlier what's really really fun about it is that we have these dark plies and light plies in the yarn which adds a real fun element to this colorway. 
This one was really fun. I applied the dry powder here in little areas and then we heat set it to let it spread. This took a long time for all the colors to absorb and as I showed at the beginning of the video, the colors actually did penetrate all the way through. So we've got a little bit of white, but we ultimately have really decent color coverage. And again, we don't have any green in the yarn, which I am so happy about. Frozen blue tends to strike quickly. Uh, I'm not as familiar with honey mustard, but the two of them definitely could have combined and created something that is very green, which again, could be beautifully, very beautiful color-wise, but that wasn't what I was going for. So I think that this colorway also turned out really, really fun. Finally, we had our yarn mop that I used to wipe on the extra dye on my hands. And I'm not sure how apparent it is, but the base here is not a bare white. It is sort of like a pastel blue, almost with hints of green. And that's because I used this as a mop when there was no acid in the fiber. And then I dunked it into a jar with acid and then steam set it later on. So this allowed some of the dyes to spread. Now, the reason why we have some dyes striking where they were at all is that my tap water is slightly acidic, but also when I added it to the jar, things were crowded. So if the dye spread, then maybe at that point it could strike sort of where it landed. I was really happy to get color spread here, mainly because there wasn't that much color on it. I didn't, I, since I was applying the dye to the yarn, I was using my fingers to help spread it through the containers. So there weren't as many opportunities to wipe my hands on here as I do in other videos. And so allowing the colors to spread and sort of softening it helped give some really fun feelings to the yarn that I'm really excited about. Here we have it, all of the yarn that I dyed inspired by this image released by NASA that is a false colorized image based on the temperatures of these different dunes on Mars. This gives extra dimension to this image because you can see how much exposure to that sunlight really does make a difference with the temperatures on the surface of the red planet. Now it is time to take a look at some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same photograph. This is my favorite part of doing the Chemnitz dye along because there are so many different ways that a group of people can interpret one photograph and translate that into yarn. Whether you went the yellow and blue route that I did or you looked at the part of the photo that I included that's a little more desaturated, that probably is more representative of what this original photograph looked like, and you took that and went for something that is just black, gray, and white. I have no idea if anyone went that direction, but that is certainly something that works as well. A big part of this exercise and why I love doing this all together is not how closely did you get the colors that are represented in the photo, but what about this photo inspired you? What technique did it inspire you to do? And to see all the different colors that people create. Whether you went for a technique similar to what I did or you decided to go in a completely different direction. There are so many different ways that people can be inspired from one image or feeling that they get from that image. As you are dying along with me, if you don't nail what your inspiration was in your head, if you were trying to avoid green like me and got green, that's okay. I want to see your yarn. I find that each time I go for this, whether or not I feel like I nailed it or sort of missed it a little bit, I learn and it encourages me to take more risks as I play with colors and to go in directions that are different from where I might usually end up if I was picking the things myself every time, which maybe would be even more purple than I already die. If you enjoy these videos, please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. In addition to these monthly live streams, I publish at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week, exploring my journey to apply color to yarn and see all the different things that I learn along the way. I was reflecting recently on how far I've come since I first launched Dye Pot Weekly to where I am now, both in terms of confidence, not just with techniques and commercial dyes, but also with color. 
and I want to thank all of you for joining me on this learning adventure. There is so much more I want to explore. Uh, so if you want to help support this journey, I do have an Etsy shop and a Patreon. You can find links to everything down below. And stay tuned because next month I will pick a new photo uh, for, or I suppose at the point that this recap is out, it's this month. Typically the recap comes out three to four weeks after my live stream to give people a chance to dye yarn themselves and submit the photos. So as of April 24th, when I'm filming this recap, I do not, not yet know what my May inspiration will be. But make sure you stay tuned because I'm sure that if it's not out already, it'll be out soon. Thank you so much for watching.